Hey everybody, so coming in today, coming into the house, because I'm going to show you something interesting about my workshop. It's not interesting, but it's on the car I'm working on. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my 1969 Dodge Charger. Now, if you remember, this is the um, uh, 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 the AMT Dodge Dart Charger Daytona. I tried to say that twice. That I really want to do because of the long nose, the, uh, the high wing, because everybody loves the Daytona. But... Because the nose didn't fit on properly, that was two videos earlier, I believe. I can link the description down below, but uh, that was two videos, two or three videos earlier. Didn't fit. I'm just making it to a regular 69 Charger. Now, I know a lot of people say this is a really, really bad kit, and it's not a great kit, but some people say it's maybe the worst kit ever, but personally, I've built this kit before, and it's pretty decent. I think it came out pretty well, but I want to show you a little problem I'm having right now. So it's right here on the bench. We're going to flip this around and we're going to show you my little issue that I'm having right now. It's kind of the final thing left on the car to do. So as soon as I'm done with that issue, the car's done. So let's take a look at it, huh? How about it? We're in the shop here with my nice Coke machine, some Cokes and tires sitting here. Some gasoline canisters. So here is the 69 Charger. As you can see, I have it a little lowered. It had a... The option of the uh, the two holes because it is the um, well the back is the metal axle, the front has got the little pegs which never seem to quite fit on right. And then I had to scrape them and glue them to fit them in there. So the front wheels are kind of low in the um, the fender well. That's my finger on the screen. I kind of should have taken a little bit of um, a lighter and kind of pushed the fenders out a little bit because it kind of sits real close. The rear end sits real nice. So. Striping here, I had to put the decal on, the um, the white stripe decal. I kind of wish it was a double stripe because the green kind of goes through it. But uh, it had the Daytona written on it. I tried to paint it. It didn't look so good. So I found these uh, AMT, uh, what is that, the Cool Cat decal. Came off another kit. I thought that looked pretty sharp. Let's swing that around here to the other side. Oh, I just stabbed myself with the knife. That knife. All right. So I think that looks pretty sharp. All right. So, that being said, there's the engine, needs a little touch-up, front bumper. Front bumper, I had to make an adjustment on. It had, um, like, push bars here. And you can see that one there's kind of didn't quite stand out right. But uh, then I uh, kind of cut the, the, the push bars off because I kept hitting on the uh, this bottom valance piece here. So what I did was I just cut them off, and then the uh, the front end fit in normal. Sprayed it with the, uh, the Rust-Oleum Chrome. Came out real nice. All right. So, speaking of chrome, rear bumper time. This bad boy does not want to go in here for a damn. Let's see if I can set up the camera here so it doesn't move around. Um, let's do this. Do that. All right. So, put the bumper in, and it looks like it's flush right here. But on the sides, it doesn't even off. See how it's kind of weird like that? So... What I'm looking at is doing it like my big ass fat ass thumb ain't in the way. It's kind of hard doing it like this because normally I have it in the air with my two hands. So. so in order to put it in like this where it would slide right in, I'm going to have to do a little trim work right along here. And that's on each side, the top of the top of thing. Now I hate cutting in the pieces that are already painted and done. So this is going to be a little bit of a trick to not get the um, not not scrape up the rest of the paint in order to have this fit in perfectly. See when you put it in it's all and then it doesn't want to sit normal. See I can't even get it in there. It's sit normal. I see the camera's focusing on my hands there. So we're going to need to do some... Stop focusing on my hands. We're going to need to do a little shaving right on the top on each side here. To make that work and fit. Kind of messed up, but it is what it is. And we're going to do what we got to do. Because, you know, we're modelers. We make it work. So, overall, I like the stance on this thing. This is, I, I like I said, there were two, two holes. You have the regular stance and you can lower it. I really like this lowered stance on here. Here's the hood. It's got some dust on it. I was doing some other work. It sits real nice. Like I said, a lot of people bash this kit. It's not a great kit, but ooh, we got a little. A lot of people bash this kit, but it's not a bad looking kit when it's done. 
So what I do to final on this video, I will have my other, uh, I have a, a gold one that I did. I will have it with it because uh, in the video with this one, just to show how pretty cool it is. I've not had a problem. I can't say I've not had a problem, but overall, this it, it looks nice when it's done here. So I'm just saying a lot of people bash, but a lot of people also bad mouth the uh, bad mouth, bad mosh. Bad Mouth, the uh, 60, 67 uh, Pontiac GTO kit from MPC. And I've built a handful of those, and those came out real nice, too. So I guess that's what you do with it. So I'll pick the camera up here, and I'm going to show you the 66 Shelby GT350 or 500. I don't know which one it is. But that's the Revell kit. I found some new tires and wheels to put in on it. I like these Firestones. They're nice and meaty. Got some nice meat treads on these. And went through the spare pop box. Uh, tried it again. Spare park box. Take two. Went through the spare park box and um, found these real nice rims. I'm going to say they were off a old AMT or MPC. I'm not sure about the Firestones. But um, the wheels, because it had the backing for the um, to fit into the old MPC AMT pegs. That's still the Ravel um, backing here. See, it needs a little cleanup. But I had to sand the front of uh, the backing, and then I had to sand the back of the uh, the wheels to fit them in there like that. This one here I think needs a little work because it wasn't pushed down. Like, you know, these two were nicely tucked in there. And that one's kind of crooked. I might go back to that one. But this one I think needs a little work. But yeah, that's going to go on the, uh, the Mustang. That's going to look cool, I think. All right. But this video was about the... Rear bumper mishap, not mishap, but rear bumper work that needs to be done on the uh, 69 Charger. Alright, so as I leave my little workshop area here, I just want to say thanks for watching the video. Always appreciate you guys watching. As you see, you need to do a little uh, custom work done. I don't know if you really call it custom work if you're just doing trimming, but it is what it is, right? Alright, everybody. So I appreciate you watching the video. Appreciate you uh, sticking around. And I'm going to... Uh, We'll do some work and i'll catch you i update on the um when it's done in fact i really believe the next update should actually be the final product so um yeah i'm gonna walk out my house here and then i guess i'll catch you guys guess i'll catch you guys later take care everybody i'll see you around